Hello, and welcome to the Stool Pigeons. I'm Jack Jameswood. And I'm Harrison Davenport. So, Harrison, I guess we have a pre-pre-prequel to the Mark on the Green story. Is that right? That's right. That's right. So this is a prequel to the prequel that we had previously done. And this is part of our cheating story series. This is titled, The First Time I Heard My Wife Cheat with Another Guy. This happened a really long time ago. I'm definitely not going to reveal ages or timestamp any of this. My wife and I have been together on and off for the first few years since high school. We shared a lot of the same friends and went to a lot of the same places. If you've read my stories, you know that I met my wife through her cousin, who was one of my best friends growing up. We have known each other since we were pretty young. This story is short and the details are a little fuzzy, but I'll try my best to recall everything I can. These guys that my wife's cousin and I rode the bus with when we were younger were having a party at their house, which was about four blocks away from where I grew up. They were the crazier people in school. Bad grades, dumb haircuts, and they played in a grunge rock cover band. They would have parties at their houses when their parents were out of town. We were way too young to be having the kind of parties that we had at their houses. I never considered them close friends, because they lived so close, but we rarely hung out. Anyway... They were telling us they were going to have a party at one of their houses over the weekend, and that we should come. My girlfriend, now wife, and I were going through a typical on-off-again breakup that typically lasted a few days to a few weeks. I was actually pretty excited about the party, because a lot of my friends were going to be there. I needed to get out of the house and clear my head of the stupid relationship problems I was having. Saturday night came. I got dressed and told my dad I was going to stay the night at my friend's house. My dad was always pretty cool about that kind of stuff and trusted me not to do anything stupid. I headed out the door on my skateboard and swung by my friend's house so we could ride to the party together. He told his parents we were going to stay the night at my house. We left his house together and headed for the party around 8 or 9 p.m. When we got to the house, there were only a few cars out front and nobody was in the front yard. We knocked on the door and when we went inside, there were maybe 10 to 15 people there all together. I was kind of bummed out that it wasn't more of a party at first. It was more of what we called a kickback. However, this didn't last long. About 30 minutes into hanging out, the number of people in the room doubled. A little while later, I saw my girlfriend's two friends sitting on the couch in the living room. I didn't expect any of them to be at the party, and they looked just as surprised to see me. I didn't want to ask if they knew where my girlfriend, still ex-girlfriend at the time, was, because I didn't want to seem interested. I was sitting on the couch on the other side of the room, talking with one of my other buddies. They were talking to themselves, kind of being typical teenage girls, gossiping about stupid stuff. I stood up and went to the backyard for a few minutes to get a drink from the back patio fridge. When I came back in, my girlfriend was in the living room, sitting with her two friends. I remember feeling that typical high school jealousy feeling, and was kind of mad that she ended up at the party that I was at. Part of me missed her, but part of me didn't want to see her either. In my mind, the whole point of going to the party was to get her and our relationship out of my head. I remember that she completely ignored me. I pretended to ignore her, but kept looking at her from my peripherals every chance I could. The house was full of people at this point, and I was on the back patio drinking with my friends. When I went to get another drink, I looked through the glass back door and saw her sitting on the couch next to a guy I'd never seen before. He was tall and had black hair. He was dressed like a punk rocker and was sitting really close to her. I felt jealous immediately, but continued to play it cool with my friends. The two of them continued talking on the couch for a long time. I tried to ignore them the best I could, while also feeling extremely jealous and acting like a typical high school guy would. Fast forward to the end of the party, when everyone started going home. I asked my buddy if I could crash at his place for the night. He told me I could sleep in his little brother's room, because his parents and brother were out of town. I drank a few too many beers that night, and things were a little hazy. I remember walking past her in the living room. She was still on the couch with the punk rocker guy. He had his hand on her leg, and she was pretending I didn't exist. My friend that I came with, my wife's cousin, was passed out in the hammock on the back patio. There were only a handful of people left at the party. I decided I was going to go to bed and didn't want to see any more. I went into his brother's room and climbed onto the top bunk of the bed that sat against the wall. I left the door open and just kicked my shoes off before climbing up. I remember lying there looking at the ceiling and everything was kind of spinning. The house got quieter and quieter and I could still hear a few people talking out in the living room and kitchen area. I heard footsteps coming down the hall but couldn't see who it was. They passed the door of the room I was sleeping in and went into the bedroom next to mine. I thought it was one person based on how quiet they were. Then I heard something that was all too familiar to me. 
It was a short laugh, almost a giggle. It was my wife's voice. I felt my arms and legs go numb as I lay completely still, listening for any noise I could. I couldn't believe she was actually in a bedroom with another guy, knowing I was there. I was still lying completely still on the bed when I heard another noise. It was the sound of a guy's voice, saying something that seemed like it was loud enough for me to hear on purpose. I remember thinking that she was only doing it to make me mad, and nothing was going to actually happen. She knew I was there, she knew we had just gone through a breakup, and she was just trying to get me upset. That was until a few minutes later, I heard the first moan. It was quiet, slightly muffled, but it was real. The house was pretty quiet at this point, and the hallway was dark. I turned my body towards the wall, thinking it would help me hear better. Then, I heard a second moan. I couldn't control what was going on in my head. I was mad, but really turned on at the same time. I remember listening so intently that I could hear the room buzzing as I waited for more sounds. After a minute, I didn't hear any more moans. I laid there completely still, wondering what was going on on the other side of the wall. That question was answered a few minutes later. I heard the sound of the bed shifting before it made a loud screech as if somebody jumped onto it. I heard another giggle and couldn't believe what happened next. I started to hear small squeaks from the bed in his parents' bedroom. They were quiet but noticeable. The room spun slightly as I laid there listening for any sounds I could hear. I vividly remember his voice saying, is this what you want? A few seconds later, the bed started squeaking much louder. I never heard her say a word, only a few moans muffled through the wall. This punk rocker guy, I later found out, came with my wife to the party. He went to a neighborhood high school and was now hooking up with my girlfriend, now wife. The sounds went on for what felt like an eternity. I was confused and super angry until I realized how turned on I was. Things were quiet for a minute or two before I heard them talking quietly. They must have stood up and gotten off of the bed. A minute later, I could hear my wife making sharp moans. They continued to hook up for quite a while before everything went completely quiet. The next morning, I woke up and I thought I may have dreamt the entire thing. I walked out of the room and looked into the master bedroom. The door was wide open and the bed sheets were lying on the floor. I quickly examined the floor and saw nobody in there. I remember spending the rest of the weekend angry at myself, angry at her, and angry at him. A few months later, she and I talked again and I never brought up that night. It wasn't until we were in our 20s that we talked about it for the first time. She claims that they only fooled around, but did not hook up. Fun fact, that guy she hooked up with at the party turned out to be pretty famous later on. That's all I'll say. Okay, Jack, so what'd you think of this prequel to the prequel? Well, it reminded me a little bit of uh, American Pie if uh, Jason Biggs' character had uh, lots of self-reflection and a deep meditation on uh, desire and attraction. Except uh, replace the pie with a punk rocker guy and Jason Biggs not getting any action and he would be in the bedroom next door and Nadia then hooking up with this punk rocker guy. And I think it's exactly like American Pie. You know, what's a little bit of a mystery for me is that uh, Mark on the Green and his wife in these stories have very little interaction. There's very little dialogue between the two of them. Which I guess there has to be, though, because the majority of the time she doesn't know he's there. I mean, I think this is actually the only instance, and we're not even sure if she knew he was there. That's still not 100%, but this is the clo this is the closest we've seen to her maybe knowing he was ever there and able to hear. Yeah, Mark on the Green is... Is it the Danish writer who does, uh, he did like the seven part, seven books called My Struggle, Nosgard? You know who I'm talking about? I'm not familiar with that. Oh, he's he's this guy that has literally taken uh, his journals that he's written uh, throughout his life. And it's tens of thousands of pages of like reflections on his life and his relationships. And Mark on the Green is a little bit like that. But now we've gotten to the pre prequel of the Mark on the Green Chronicles. What I want is non-sexual stories. I want I want a detailed account of what Mark on the Green does in his everyday life. Yeah, maybe. I mean, or we could just go ahead and skip to all of the other good stories that he has hiding in the filing cabinet. Because while we've now knocked out the prequels, there was the wife and the boss. And then there was the wife's best friend's husband. We have we have those two stories. But 
for those of you who have been asking, oh, this is unfair. Like, why is Mark not getting any action? Mark does actually get some action with the wife's cousin, his best friend in this story. Mark on the Green is a very complex character. He's sure you can read one of his stories and come away with one impression of him. But I have read now every single one of the Mark on the Green stories. And I can tell you this man is deep. He, he reflects intensely on his life. He reflects intensely on the relationships that he has with other people. And I think over time, you come to see him not as somebody that has a fetish, but, you know, somebody that you know and love. Yeah, I do enjoy the insights that he gives us into his uh, into his head. It's very interesting that he's providing us, you know, with a detailed account of everything he was thinking while these things were going on. And this happened in high school. Could you imagine if Jason Biggs was sitting there and you just heard his own internal monologue throughout in uh, American Pie? Probably not as deep as Mark on the Green. Probably not. They'll probably remake the movie with that premise, though. It's just Jason Biggs' internal thoughts of what's going on, which I have a pretty good idea of what his internal thoughts are uh, during that webcam scene of American Pie. I am kind of interested in, in understanding Mark on the Green, his wife's relationship, like outside of this context. Like, I, I would really like to know what like a fun day is like between them. Like, what do they talk about in a on a car ride? Yeah, that's true. We don't have any idea what their regular day-to-day -day interactions are like. But he does say that he loves his wife. So, I mean, I guess that's something. Well, I mean, he stayed with her after all these years. Yeah. That's yeah, a that's commitment. He's been, with her, he's been with her since high school. That's a very difficult thing to, to have a certain desire for one woman. Like, she, she's almost like a refined wine for him. Yeah, and I think this story also adds a little bit of ammo to our theory that we've had that his wife has somewhat known this has been going on the entire time. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, one thing we never get to hear about the wife is just how clean her teeth are that she works at the dentist office, you know? I, I've got nothing for that. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, so Harrison, we have a video that's going to be dropping later this week, and that's the story where Mark Green finally gets some action. Yeah, and that's going to be available on our Patreon. We've already dropped one video on there, and we wanted to just take a second to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed, because we really appreciate it first off, and it does make us able to continue to do this on a regular basis. So Jack, you want to go ahead and get out of here? Yep. Okay, uh, thank you for listening. And please remember to hit the subscribe button.